we continue with our discussion on uh, taxation under uh, wealth management and in this particular section we are going to uh, talk about something extremely important from the investment perspective and that's because we are going to talk about capital gains now what do we mean by capital gains typically gains that come when you buy and sell an investment right so when you are buying and selling an investment if there is any money that is made that's called capital gain if there is any money that is lost that's called capital loss uh, it's an important part because at the end of the day in wealth management you are getting people to do investments and when they buy investments and they sell investments what becomes very very important is what is the post tax return on those investments right a lot of the times the choice of investment depends upon us choosing uh, identifying what kind of taxation applies on certain instruments a lot of the times how much time do you hold an investment for comes from the perspective of uh, what is the taxation that is applicable on a certain kind of investment right that is where capital gains assumes paramount importance and that is what we're going to cover in this particular section so income generated by buying and selling investments is known as capital gains if you lose money negative income that's called a capital loss the capital gains the taxation on capital gain depends on what is the asset class in which the investment is done it is also dependent on the tenure on which the investment was held so two definitions one is basically the asset class that you are investing in and two is the time for which you have held the investment both of these will define what is going to be the tax rate on this so we have a slide which will basically capture whether you are investing in equities or you are investing in debt or you are investing in gold or you are investing in real estate and so on and so forth and what is the applicability of taxes on it from the perspective of capital gains we are going to divide it between two which is equity versus rest of the others that are there right and in real terms it is uh, so that's a simplistic classification that comes up there uh, at some point of time we will look at using a table that gives us details on what kind of capital gains plays out uh, with respect to uh, non equity transactions right now in the context of equities what is important is we look at instruments that are trading on the exchange right off exchange uh, instruments uh, may get taxed differently that is for a later discussion we'll leave that for the time being let's broadly look at how do you classify broad income tax from the capital gains right now when you look at the capital gains on the left side is all your equity segment which is equity exchange traded funds any direct shares or stocks and any equity mutual funds they get taxed based on slabs of short term capital gain and long term capital gain long term capital gain is zero for equities so if you are a long term investor equities are a really good asset class because a they generate better returns or higher returns over the longer run because of the risk involved in equities two there is no taxation implication there typically there is no tax if uh, there is long term now how do you define long term long term is greater than 1 year short term is less than 1 year so short term is less than 1 year in which case you have 15% tax remember only on the gain so if you buy an instrument for 100 and sell it on 120 the gain is 20 if this 20 is short term then you'll end up paying 15% on this right obviously there is going to be a cess on this as well so it becomes 15 into 1 plus 3% so that becomes 15.45% exactly but for all practical purposes we're just going to look at 15% the 3% cess will automatically get calculated right that's what happens on equities any other etfs for example gold etf or you know debt mutual funds or real estate or physical gold or other 
which could be a vehicle or unlisted shares or anything in fact forget ETFs here but primarily debt mutual funds and real estate are the two major segments gold is a major segment where short term basically gets taxed on the income tax slab of the person what do we mean by income tax slab if the income of the person is already above 10 lakhs then this will be 30 percent if it is 5 to 10 lakhs then this will be 20 percent so when you add this income and you look at the slab it just gets added to the slab straight away short term capital gain from any of the non equity instruments right from the long term perspective there are a couple of interesting terms that come up long term capital gain tax is 10 percent right only on the gain and there is something called as with indexation benefit where the tax is 20 percent so you could choose either of these two of of late what has happened is in certain classes it is only 20 percent with mandatory indexation applied we'll talk about indexation in a moment the other interesting part is here short term is less than three years and long term is greater than three years right so the long term short term definition for non equity funds or non equity asset classes or instruments is different it is three years right so that's the discussion equity short term 15 percent long term zero debt gold real estate anything else short term income tax slab long term 10 percent or 20 percent with indexation right so let's understand the concept of long term for equities long term is one year for everything else long term is three years so if someone purchases uh, you know a, a debt fund or a land or a or gold and sells it before three years it will be short term capital gain or loss however if someone purchases equity and sells it after one and a half years that's treated as long term capital gains right so zero tax on that right so that has to be a careful assessment that you have to do that uh, on debt long term comes under three years right debt funds debt direct corporate bonds that you buy or real estate that people buy etc right we saw this term called indexation right now what do we mean by indexation now, government allows the cost of long term assets to be inflated in keeping with inflation in the economy right this adjustment or increase is called as indexation we get a table released by the government that basically gives us the numbers to calculate a standard standard measure of inflation this is called the cost inflation index or CII and this the central board of direct taxes releases every year so for example if the number in one year is 450 and the number in the next year is 500 for this index then the inflation is 500 by 450 minus 1 or 500 minus 450 by 450 so that's the inflation measure that will come out what do you do is you inflate the cost take a simple example let's say you buy something for 100 right and let's for argument's sake very simply put inflation at 10 percent per year after five years or after let's say three years you sell at 150 what is the capital gain 150 minus 100 that's 50 right but there is inflation in the economy so if i assume a 10 percent inflation then after one year 100 would become 110 after two years this would become 121 after three years this would become approximately 133 so the taxation law says either you pay 10 percent on 50 or you inflate the cost to 133 and pay 20 percent on the difference which is 17 so we will inflate the cost from 100 to 133 based on the inflation measure and then find out what is the capital gain and then pay 20 percent on that so in a lot most of the instruments now this 20 percent by applying indexation is mandatory right so for all practical purposes the income tax department assumes that that is going to be the case in general that is beneficial also right so 20 percent on 17 will be 3.4 10 percent on 50 will be 5 so you would prefer 3.4 right so technically indexation is allowed to inflate the cost 
that's the broad objective of indexation right let's look at the table so cii started coming out after 1981 before that everything is considered at 100 so if you bought a land piece in 1975 that starts at 100 right and then this keeps inflating every year so you can look at any two years and apply the concept of uh, inflation between those two years right and uh, based on that calculate uh, the the inflated cost price so that's income tax india dot gov dot in from that website we can get this table this set of data and you could use it let's take an example to understand it right let's say the land is purchased in financial year 2001 to 2000 2001 right it's originally purchased at let's say something like 10 lakhs and then it is sold at 25 lakhs so actual gain in monetary terms is 15 lakhs right now 2000 2001 2010 11 so this is the initial cii and this is the ending cii so what is the inflation inflation is 711 minus 406 by 406 that's the inflation in other words what i will do is i'll take the 10 lakh number and multiply it with 711 by 406 that gives me the inflated value right that's the inflation 1.7 whatever the number would be that's the inflation so my 10 lakhs will become 17.5 lakhs that's basically 711 by 406 into 10 lakhs and now if the sale price is considered as this then the capital gain is only seven and a half lakhs 20 percent of this is going to be my long-term capital gain tax that's what we are looking at in terms of taxation calculation so that's what we mean by indexation it allows you to basically inflate the cost using inflation i bought it at 10 lakhs but the cost becomes 17 lakh 51,231 point something based on the calculation this table is to be used whenever capital gains tax is being calculated on and especially this applies in the case of land because typically land holdings are more than five seven ten years and so it ends up being uh, a bigger calculation of tax and it ends up being a reasonable saving that comes out because of this calculation correct let's take some more examples uh, assuming that a land was bought in 2010 for 20 lakhs it was sold in 2012 for 30 lakhs what is the capital gain tax right do i need to index this is only two years if it is two years this is short term capital gain short term capital gain of 10 lakhs this will get taxed on the income tax slab income slab whatever is your income slab it will get taxed on that if you are in 10 percent 20 percent obviously because the gain is 10 lakhs you will go into the third slab straight away and based on that the tax on this partially would be 30 percent etc right so that's the slab that will apply here now what if the land was sold in 2015 for a price of 50 lakhs now it's greater than three years so we're looking at long term right so let's look at the index in 2010 index in 2010 and we're looking at financial year 2010 that's 632 so 632 is the index in 2010 what's that in 2015 14 15 1024 so that's 1024 multiplied by the initial purchase price which is 20 lakhs if we do this calculation we will get the value so let's quickly do this calculation we have 1024 we have 632 and we have 20 lakhs which is the original price so i will take 20 multiplied by 1024 divided by 632 we get the value at 32.41 that's the inflated cost price can we get the selling price so the selling price is 50 lakhs and based on this we can find the capital gain that's 50 minus 32.4 that's the long-term capital gain on this 20 percent tax is going to apply right so my tax is going to be 20 percent into the indexed value that's 3.52 lakhs that i'm going to pay right so that's effectively the taxation value that will apply based on the indexed cost 
that comes up and uh, depending on that we eventually arrive at the value so that's how indexation applies that's how basically indexation is useful when you are looking at uh, examples of long-term capital gains on asset classes such as debt and uh, real estate and gold right now capital gains on equities is straightforward so ashish bought 100 shares of reliance industries worth rupees 1000 on 1st january 2012 he sold 50 on 3rd july at a price of 1050 and the remaining shares 50 were sold on 3rd january 2013 at a price of 990 right so the first 50 shares he sold at 1050 minus the buy price 1000 is short term capital gain so that's 50 into 50 that's 2500 into 15 percent because that's the short term capital gain tax that will come up as 375 rupees that's the taxation the remaining is a capital loss right but that is long term capital gain because it's already more than one year right and on this there is zero percent tax so there's no tax right there is a tax incidence that will come up because of this 375 because half of the shares have been sold in about six to seven months correct so that's how you apply the taxation on equities another short case let's say ashish now bought 100 shares worth rupees thousand each on first january and then he bought another hundred on first march at a price of 1050 now he sold 100 on 3rd July 2012 at a price of 1050 and remaining shares were sold on 3rd March 2013 at a price of 1000. What is the capital gain tax, you know, uh, gain or loss? Is there a tax incident? So 100 bought at 1000, another 100 bought at 1050. This was on 1 Jan. This was on 2012 this was on 1 March 2012 selling 100 shares were sold for 1050 on 3rd July 2012 and then 100 were sold at 1000 for on 3rd March 2013 right now the first one the first sale would be short term capital short term right but do I take the purchase price as 1000 for these 100 shares or do I take the purchase price as 1050? If I take FIFO, the price will be 1000. If I take LIFO, last in first out, the price will be 1050. Now, logically, it makes sense to take LIFO, but the tax law is very clear. You are supposed to use FIFO. So on the first 100 shares that you bought, the first 100 shares came in at a price of 1000. You sold it at 50. 1050 so 50 into 100 is my short term capital gain tax incidence 15 percent on this 15 percent on this is going to be 15 percent of 5000 that's going to be 750 the next set came at 1050 and i sold it at 1000 so minus 50 into 100 but that's long term capital gain so that is zero there is no tax on that correct that's basically how we calculate capital gain on equities remember capital gain on equities when you're calculating when you're selling a share you have to assume the principle of first in first out if you are buying multiple shares in multiple lots the first lot to be bought is the first that is assumed to be sold in this context as well right so that's capital gains on equities the final thing that we need to carve in terms of capital gains is the setting off and carrying forward of losses, right? In case a loss has been made on sale of an asset, this loss can be set off against gains made. Such losses can set off against gains only under the head capital gains, right? Any losses that cannot be set off in one assessment year can be carried forward and set off over the next eight assessment years, right? Short term losses can be set off against long term or short term gains, correct? 
long term losses can be set off only against long term capital gains now in the case of equities there is no long term loss so there is no question of no there is no long term taxation so there is no question of applying it let's take an example of short term losses and short term gains if we take this example of uh, of uh, reliance in this case the second lot got sold at 3rd march 2013 right that's long term right if instead we had sold it on 3rd feb this also would have become short term 100 into 100 this would have become short term in which case if this was short term capital gain this minus 5000 and this plus 5000 could have been set off against each other thereby ensuring that there is no liability that comes up right and that's the important construct a lot of the times you could just sell off this chunk of reliance and buy it again after a few days to ensure that there is a short term capital loss here right you could sell it on 3rd feb and buy it again on 3rd march obviously assuming that the price remains the same and set off these capital gain short term gains and losses so you do not have to pay this 750 correct so short term losses can be set off against long term and short term gains obviously asset class wise long term losses so equities versus equities and non equities versus non equities long term losses can be set off only against long term capital gains so from land if i sell and get a long term capital gain and i sell and get a long term capital loss i can set it off against each other whatever is the net amount is what i have to pay tax on if my loss is 20 lakhs and my gain is only 10 lakhs then i can carry forward this 10 lakhs of losses this can be carried forward for the next eight assessment year so next year if i have a 10 lakh capital gain and let's assume this is long term and this is long term next year if i have a long term gain of 10 lakhs i can still set it off and not pay any tax at that point of time that's extremely important to understand because a lot of the times just by doing these simple transactions you could end up avoiding having to pay a significant chunk of tax for the for the end investor right and hence taxation becomes a very very important part obviously there are multiple rules on this so that's beyond the scope at this point of time we need to discuss this in more detail at a separate stage and probably you'll have to read up a lot before you go and uh, kind of work in this industry or apply these concepts but the basic tenets stay the same and that's what our objective was in this particular section so that's broadly it in this particular section on capital gains as we come towards the end of this particular section a couple of quick questions howard bought 100 shares of infosys at 1000 and another 100 at a price of 1100 he sold 100 shares within a month at 1050 calculate the short term capital gain or loss if any right explain the concept of indexation what do we mean by indexation give an example to explain that concept right thank you